All right, I'd like to talk about sterilization techniques. Now, sterilization may seem like a trivial aspect of microbiology, but it's extremely important in the laboratory. And um, the first time I ever made media in the laboratory, I um, ended up basically contaminating all of it when I was done because I just didn't really understand the sterilization techniques and how to work under sterile conditions. So it's extremely important to uh, understand what goes on there and why we do it. Obviously, if you're trying to grow a particular bacteria on a media, on some kind of media, um, you don't want other bacteria growing on it. You don't want other viruses around it. You don't want anything else. You don't want fungi. You don't want, um, you know, whatever, protozoa. You, you just don't want these things to grow because you want to you eventually obtain most likely a pure sample. So with the sterilization techniques, the one probably most of us are most familiar with is pasteurization. And, and that's common if you drink juice or, or milk maybe is the best example where um, basically it's a process of heating to 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, okay? And it doesn't kill all the cells. But what it does do is it kills things like um, tuberculosis and some of the other heat-resistant but non-spore-forming bacteria, okay? So it's heating it long enough to kill heat-resistant bacteria but ones that don't form spores because dealing with endospores is really difficult and the only way to deal with spore formers and to kill, to ensure that you've killed all spores, is to use one of these. And this is an autoclave, okay? And the other thing about pasteurization is it leaves food tasting normal. We know this because we drink milk or whatever, and um, it tastes normal. It doesn't taste weird in any way. So, But it doesn't kill all cells, okay? So some things are still left alive. Now the autoclave, the autoclave is basically a way of completely sterilizing everything, okay? It kills all bacteria, okay? It kills all bacteria, kills all endospores, and that's what you do when you're making media or if you're cleaning some, uh, some pipette tips or something like that, you're going to use the autoclave. And essentially what the autoclave is, you, you're, everyone's familiar with this, it's just a steam cooker, okay? Um, these are common in kitchens, so it's just a steam cooker. You're heating to 121 degrees Celsius 15, at 15 psi for 20 minutes, okay? And it kills all bacteria, kills all endospores. So an extremely important uh, piece in any laboratory. Another way to deal with uh, killing bacteria or sterilizing instruments or anything like that is to use radiation, okay? So basically, the, the it damages the DNA, it causes mutations, and depending on where these mutations occur, those mutations can be lethal or maybe they're not lethal. But in most cases, they, they cause some kind of damage to the organism that, you know, in, in that decreases its ability to continue surviving. So radiation is another effective way of sterilizing things. So you can use UV light, uh, you can use x-rays or gamma rays being, the you know, obviously the strongest. But in a lot of cases, it's UV light. So a few more sterilization techniques. Now this is probably one of the more interesting and useful ones I actually have pictured here. And you might not know what it is, but essentially it's a filter, okay? And what happens here is in filtration, it's used in cases where heat will destroy the organism being, you know, used. So if you're working with a heat sensitive bacteria, you're not going to want to use an autoclave. You're not going to want to use other kinds of heat or radiation. You're going to you might want to just use something where you can simply filter it through, okay? And essentially, whatever, you know, you, you grow your um, bacteria up, and you pass it right through this filter, okay? You pass it right through, probably in a liquid media, right through this filter. And basically, the pore size is 0.2 micrometers. And that 0.2 micrometers is good enough to catch any bacteria, okay? So no bacteria are going to pass through the filter. And, but at the same time, other things will, okay? Um, other things will. So things that might pass through the filter will be things like viruses, okay? So viruses can pass through because they're much smaller. And um, it's unlikely, though, that you're going to find, you know, have viruses laying around on your bench or something like that at the lab. I mean, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But in most cases, it's something that's kind of insignificant, so you don't really need to uh, consider it or worry about it. Um, also, another common thing, everybody has these in their lab, and they have refrigerators and freezers of various kinds. So you might have a refrigerator if you're putting something in that you just want to, say, not have any chemistry occurring in, but you just want to keep it from, um, you want to keep it from heating up or, or gaining, or whatever the case is, or you want to slow the growth. 
And that's what cold temperatures can be used for. And of course, more long-term storage, you might use like a negative 80 degrees Celsius freezer. So it slows bacterial growth. It does not kill the bacteria. That's the important point. Cold temperatures are not going to kill it unless they're really, really cold. I mean, they'd have to be really cold. But the point being is they don't kill um, bacteria under normal conditions. And in talking about this, I, I guess I've been a little bit um, vague. There's different forms going on here. Not everything is so-called so sterilization. So sterilization is the process by which all living cells, spores, viruses, etc., are destroyed on an object. Okay, so if you have an object, some let's say you have a spatula from lab, you want to disinfect it, you want to remove all spores, everything from it. You're going to put that in the autoclave, it's going to kill all the spores, all the viruses, all the cells. Everything dies. That's sterilization, okay? Now, disinfection is a, is a little different, okay? So disinfection is the killing or removal of disease-producing organisms from inanimate surfaces, okay? So you want to remove the disease-forming organisms from inanimate surfaces. Think of a hospital. Think of a surgical tool, a scalpel, for instance. I don't know. Um, might be a great example. You want to disinfect it. You want to get any kind of disease producing organisms off of it. Okay, that might be something, a place where you might see this uh, disinfection occurring. So you want all the disease forming, causing organisms off of the surface. Um, it does not necessarily result in sterilization though. Okay, so the pathogens are killed, but other microbes may survive. Now, antisepsis is similar to disinfection. Okay, but it applies to removing pathogens from the surface of living tissue, okay? Obviously, you're not going to want to use an antiseptic that's really, really um, strong because it's got to go on human tissue, okay? It could damage human tissue. It could damage the tissue of the organism. You don't want to do that, obviously. So the disinfection, uh, disinfectant agents that you might use on, say, your laboratory bench are not going to be the same that you're going to use on the human body, okay? They're just simply not going to be as harsh, okay? And... Um, so they're usually not as toxic as the disinfectants and they and, and that would frequently damage living tissue. So damage to living tissue can definitely occur if you're using a disinfectant when you should be using an antiseptic. And another interesting um, thing here is that antibacterial agents are can be one or one of the one or the other of bacteriostatic or bactericidal. Okay. Basically, what bacteriostatic means is that they're going to inhibit the growth of the bacteria, but not necessarily kill them. So they inhibit growth, don't kill them. But bactericidal um, chemical substances that are chemical substances that kill microbes. Okay, so it depends on what you're working with.